What's up, it's Bobby K. All right, I got a quick one for you. No, I don't. This is a longer video, but it is on purpose. If you are interested in designing, you got a designer, you want to be a designer, you have a landscaping company, you're considering hiring someone for your backyard, your front yard, and getting a design plan, this video is absolutely packed with how do you do it. This is my secrets. This is literally me in real time showing you how to create a 3D design. Now, here's the thing. I would say the best way to watch this video is probably you throw it on the phone, throw your earbuds in, and let it go because it's like two hours. You're gonna go through some spots where you're simply just hearing stuff or watching stuff, but you can scroll around, you can look at different parts, you can cherry pick, you can rewatch the parts that pertain to you. But by the end, you are going to understand what goes into a 3D design process and how this is all put together. You're gonna see from start to finish. You're interested in that kind of stuff, go in the links below. I got tons of additional stuff that can really put you down the rabbit hole of what it's like to run a landscaping company, be a 3D designer, or get a 3D design. I would love to help you with that. Let's get into the video. This is a training with my students. So this is real time. Go, go, go. Let's go. You go into Google Earth Pro, you type in the address, it'll do a top down, you zip in, and then you say save image. And I just save it as the client's last name and I say Google, like our, our uh, uh, yeah, I say Google typically, like the Google overhead. So then what you do, I've saved it already. I already did it, guys. You go into tools, you go into picture import, and it's overlay, okay? There's all these different options, overlay, because you're going to go on top of the image. Now, I'm going to squash this down because it's going to get in the way um, just to one person. So I can't see all you guys, um, but... Speak up if you got a question. All right, what is your last name? It's this one. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to import this. Basically, I'm taking this. I always have my grid on because I like to snap it, but sometimes that doesn't matter because of the big overlay. As you see, it's way too small, right? So what hey, real do, quick, Bobby. Yeah. Is this how you do all of your 3D designs? Most of them. I'll either have a survey from the client which is great. It's got all the measurements and it's got the points, but sometimes they're incomplete and I will go over to the Google earth. Okay. Gotcha. Now here's the thing. Sometimes you're going to have trees, aren't you? In a lot of this well-established neighborhood and you can't see down on this. This is why we have to get measurements. This is why I provide say a PDF for somebody out of state that has perimeter measurements of the house. And from this corner of the house out to this tree is 27 feet. All the things I would take on an appointment in the first place. Jack has seen me on an appointment where I'm walking off and I'm wheeling. You guys have seen some of the probably the seven figure videos where you see me like in B-roll doing that. Well, I'm getting measurements. I'm getting all these different points. I'm measuring the foundation height, say the foundation, like it's slope, which we're going to have here. So we're going to talk about that. Say it's 30 inches here. And then all of a sudden, by the time it gets to this point of the house, it gets to zero. I'll make note of that in my chicken scratch, okay? So you're getting as much data and intel as well as pictures while you're out there. Very, very important. But I like to do this to kind of have a reminder and a template and look, there's the fence. Like it shows me everything. Believe it or not, this house is like a double lot. It goes all the way out. This is in Afton. You guys know where Afton is. Um, so he's got a lot of property in what we need to do before I jump ahead, let's get this to scale. So here's what you do. See how it says 90 there? You say resize using known distance. I usually take the snap off and I click here and I click to here and a box will come up. I'm going to type 90 because that's what it says on Google. You say, okay, boom. And it gets it to the exact size. Now here's the thing. I don't trust it 100% because as you scroll in on Google Earth, the closer and closer you get, the more skewed the house tends to get. It's not exactly drop down, like top down all the time. So I'm going to check it. I sent you guys over the folder that's got all the measurements. As you see, my measurements are very chicken scratch. You know, this is how I do it. It's very easy. I try to make things as easy as possible. Now, what I want to do is I actually want to take this and I want to turn it so that the lines are straight with the grid, okay? So I'm going to click on here. I'm going to take this thing off. And I'm going to turn it so that the house is with the grid. Is with the grid. All right, it needs to go a little more. Let's say minus 10. Maybe a little more, minus 11. Okay, see that roof line is level? But then it starts to go that way. 
like I said, they get skewed. But this is going to be a good guide for us, okay? So now I want to check the measurements. I have that the house, that this line right here is 26, and then this is 20, and then from this over is another 20. So we got 20 plus 20 plus 26. We got 66 feet. So what I do is I go into plan detail. Sorry, there's, there's stuff that pops up on my screen you guys can't see. I'm going to click on line. I'm going to click line style. And I make it a little wider. I go to about four inches. And then I make it something very vibrant that I can see. Greens, pinks, whatever. Now I'm going to grab this guy. And I want to make sure that Google did me a service here. And I'm going to put the snap on because it's right, lining up right on the corner. I'm going to take this over. Uh-oh. That's 82. I didn't write. You know what I'm saying? So I know that it really is 66. That's what the front of the house truly should be. And that'll put everything to scale. So I'm going to take this image and I'm going to squeeze it in until I get it to the right size. A little bit more. And then you'll see. That was too much. A little bit more. A little bit more. Very close. This helps when you're when you're going along fence lines and you want to you know put the road in all that stuff. Okay, so let's grab this line. Pretty much spot on, man. So I'd say that's about as close to scale as we can get it, guys. So that's how I do that. So now. I'm just going to delete this line. Got this to scale. I'm going to snap the house. Actually, it's pretty good. It's right on a corner. I like to do that and make sure. So this house is very simplistic. As we can see from your file, and if you can't see, you'll see me build it. No problem. We've got pretty much like a, a brick with a black roof. So we're going to go into building house. We're going to click on wall material. I'm going to brick, and you can obviously manipulate the color tones, everything. This brick right here, it's pretty close. It's a little bit more red than this. This is pretty darn close to what this is. And then the trim of the house is actually black. So, or the gutter line is black. So here's the thing. This is going to add actual like trim, like you would on a siding house. Most of the time I take the trim off. Let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to keep it on right now. I'm just going to do the box for now of the house. And I'm just going to do this part because we're only doing a front yard design. I don't have to do all this other stuff back here. That would be a master plan if I was doing all that. So I'm going to make the box. The height of that house, I've got 120 inches to the gutter. Or I'm sorry, 100 inches in height to the gutter from the front stoop, which is like a four inch platform, which is this part right here. So I'm gonna go down here to wall height. I'm gonna type 120 or 100, sorry, on the inches. So we got an eight foot four as far as what that is. Now, I'm gonna go up to perspective. This is where I can look at the roof material. I'm gonna click on the roof. I'm gonna try and pick something black. Blackest one I see is this roof 158. So I'm going to click on that. Let's say I wanted it even blacker. I wanted it lighter. And actually click on this arrow and say edit color and brightness. You can like mess with all anything in this program. You can change it. I'm going to darken it up just a little bit because this is a pretty dark roof. That'll be about it. And then boom. Now all of a sudden I have a house that's eight foot, four inches. Got the perspective. Now here's the problem. This thing is sitting on foundation. We've got some grade going on in the front yard. We've got all these things. If you look at the measurements that I took, this corner right here, there's 21 inches of foundation. And then by the time it gets up to here, it actually just like the level of the ground got there. It goes to zero. But regardless, we're sitting on 21 inches. So let me, let me just go into perspective just to show you what this looks like at this point. All right, you see what it is. The roof line's not right. We've got that trim on, like I told you. So here you go. I'm going to take the trim off. Boom. That's how you take the trim. Now, the gutter line is not white. It's actually black. 
So we can go in and we can change that color. We got a whole color wheel. I'm just gonna go to black and then boom, it looks like it actually does. And then to get the actual angle of the house, of the roof, it's a little less steep than this. I'm gonna take it down probably about there, I don't know, 23. That looks pretty close to the picture. You see, we've got an overhang going on. That is a one foot overhang. I would say that's probably about right. We could even go more if we wanted. You see how you can bring this out as far as you want. And I'm gonna keep it at one for now because I'm looking at the picture and, and that's about right. I've built a million of these things and I can tell you that that's what we need. Okay, so now we've got this. Now here's the thing. We wanna put this on, what was it? 21 inches of foundation. That's what's showing you look at yours and it's kind of like this kind of grayish color. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna elevate this house 21 inches in the air. Now it's floating. What I'm gonna do is we've got this snap on. I'm gonna go Command C, Command V. I'm gonna copy the house. What I'm doing is I'm gonna make the foundation. So I click and I change the wall material. I'm gonna say show all materials. I'm gonna go into concrete and I'll just pick I don't know, this one right here. There's all kinds of different colors. That one looks okay. Yeah, I'm being picky. I'm gonna click on this one. So here's the thing. We've got another replica of our house. Well, we know the foundation is 21 inches. So what we do is we say 21 right here as far as the wall height, no elevation. So it's gonna slip underneath the house we just built, no roof, no overhang. And I'm going to snap this underneath, voila. All of a sudden we've got a house and it's on a 21 inch foundation, okay? So that's what we got so far. Now here's the thing, I wanna finish building the house. I always build the homes first before I do just about anything. I don't put doors and windows on unless I wanna put a window or a door as like a point of reference for a various reason. Like I'm messing with the grade and I know the grade goes up to this point of the door, like there's reasons. This one, let's just finish building the house. And then I'm gonna show you how we manipulate all of this, the grade, which is the hardest part of this entire thing. And I make it as easy as possible. The trick with all- Bobby, real quick. Yeah. You rose the house up 21 inches first, right? I did. Because if you would have put that house layer at 21 in inches below, it would go below the Google Earth image and you won't be able to That's see right. it. That's right. So right. you are literally right at where I my point is. I always start at the very lowest point of the entire design, okay? So here's an, here's an example. Say there's a house up on a hill. And I know that from the bottom point of the street to the foundation of the house is say nine feet. Let's just say from this point to this point is nine feet. I am going and say the foundation is the same as here. It's 21 inches, okay? 21 inches and then the house goes up from there, but I'm nine feet in the air. I will add nine plus 21 inches and I will make my foundation that big because I am going to manipulate all the earth around it. I always build the houses from the lowest point of the whole design up. I always put the foundation, then I build the house, and then I manipulate everything else, okay? It's the way I found it to be the easiest. There are other ways to do it. That's the way I do it, and I've tried them all. So that is what we're doing right now. Now we've got this house at the right level. What we're gonna do is we're gonna finish building out this front stoop, and then we're gonna to start to manipulate this earth where I know the earth is gonna to start to creep up because this is a hill, okay? So the next thing is the front stoop. What it is essentially is it's five by 20 and it's 26 feet over from this corner. So I'm gonna put another reference point. I always use these lines. I'm gonna snap it on the corner. I'm gonna bring it over 26 feet. You can just say enter 26. And then I'm gonna make it a color. All right, I already did it. So that's actually where the roof line is. See how it's kind of skewed? Like this is where Google Earth is showing it. You know, it's, it's not a perfect thing, but it's not bad. So now I'm going to make that part. 
now here's the thing. If you look at the picture, this is columns and it's a roof line. There is no house, right? So what you do is I'm going to snap here and I'm gonna come out five feet. So that's what my measurements are. And it comes over 20. And then I'm gonna go back five feet. I'm gonna correct this in a minute. So right now we've got 10 feet of house. If I looked at it right now, that's not right. But the placement is right. I'm gonna take the wall height down to zero, nothing. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure the roof is the same as before. I'm gonna pick this guy. If I was really being nitpicky, I would have wrote how much I skewed this down, what the darkness is, minus 35, minus 40, minus whatever. If you're doing big houses and you got lots of different materials and stuff, I always write down these numbers of what I am changing in the, in the, the actual materials, okay? So now I've got pretty much the same roof color. It'll look the same. And I want to elevate this 100 inches in the air. Actually, I'm sorry, 100 plus 21. Got 21 of foundation. We have 100 inches of house, right? So we're going to go 121 as far as the elevation. It's going to go in the air. Now I know that guy's up in the air. I'm going to say edit roof type. And this is how I'm going to manipulate that roof so that it is cantilevering over and we're gonna put some columns in. I'm clicking on this side, I'm clicking on this side, and I can't remember if I clicked this side or the other side. I think I clicked this side, wrong guess. Click this side. So I click these three sides and all of a sudden it's gonna make that thing go up like this. And I'm doing that because of the roof that we see. And it didn't click that side, let's click it. There we go. So now you can see it's on an angle. And I also wanna change this to black, same as the other one. All right, there we go. So we look at our picture, we see that this roof kind of dives into the house, into the roof line. So we can go roof pitch and we can start to bring that thing down, actually going in to the house like it is right now. But you know what? The angle to me is not that flat. It's actually a little bit more inverted. If I'm really looking at this picture, the angle is more like that to me. So I'm actually gonna drop the height of this down a little bit. It's not cheating, it's just, I want it to look like the picture. So sometimes you gotta just play on the fly. So I'm gonna bring this up just a little bit. That's more what it looks like to me. It's actually not that drastic. Let's just bring it up a little. Maybe down one more inch. And you can always adjust all this, right? Okay, that's pretty close. So now what we wanna do is we are going to put the stoop in and the columns, the actual platform where all this is going. So according to my notes, I don't know if I wrote it on here. I know it's a four inch step up. I don't think I wrote it on here, but I know it is because I did this like a week and a half ago. Um, so I'm going to go to, I just have one of those memories. I got a visual memory. I can, don't ask. I'm going to go and represent what this looks like. I think it's just basic concrete. I'm going to look at it. It's kind of like a grayish concrete. It's like <laughs> grayish concrete. <laughs> oh, concrete's great. It's almost like a grayish blue, but I'm going to go with this one. This one actually looks kind of close. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my snaps on. I'm going to take it here, out five, over 20, back five, and connect it. And I'm going to go down here. This is if I wanted to put a border on there. Right now it is on. It's on flat. I'm going to turn it on to none so that there's no border on this concrete. I'm doing a patio right now. And I want to make the height of the patio four inches, OK? Actually, it might be six. I'm going to make it six. Most stoops are six. There we go. So if I go here, we've got a stoop, OK? We've got our roof line. And now we can put our columns in. And we could actually put the door and all the other stuff. But as you see, I've got a little bit of a problem, don't I? Exactly. I'm doing this on purpose. <laughs> Don't worry. So, 
the foundation is showing right here. Well, that's not what's really going on in real life, right? So what I wanna do is I wanna take this and it actually goes up a little bit into the brick and I can manipulate the height. I could say 21 inches. And then I know it's gonna be at the height of the foundation or it could go a little bit above. I'm gonna do 22 because it looks like it overlays the brick just a little bit. And that's what it's really like. So this is why we're gonna play with all of these other grades and get all our points up so that we're covering this up and it's actually, we're, we're pulling everything up to it versus like sinking down and trying to figure out this and that. It's so much easier this way. At least I found it that way. Three, 400 designs, take my word on it, right? Okay, so that's what we got going on right there. And then what happens is there's a little bit of a slope down here to the driveway. So what I wanna do next is I wanna get where the grade of everything is correct. So now what we're gonna do is we're going into terrain and height grid is the main thing that I use, okay? I use slope occasionally. I use area grader occasionally because if I'm doing a sunken fire pit, you can like make the walls completely fat, flat and sink it down like three feet, like it's sunk down. That's the only time I really use area graders for a sunken fire pit. Other than that, I'm using height grid. So the only thing I do not like about real-time landscape is you can only put 17 points here and 17 points here. I wish you could do unlimited. It would make it so much easier when manipulating soil and whatever else. So I know I'm only doing this area. I'm only doing the front. But because I'm pulling this so far over, unfortunately, I got to bring it the whole length of design. And I actually go past the area of design. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to bring it out past the street. I'm going to bring it over a little bit. And that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to go to 17 points here. 17 points here. These are all my data points. I wish I could have more. Honestly, sometimes I put multiple grids on a design. I highly recommend if you don't have to do that, don't because when they overlap, it makes a ripple or a bubble in the design. And there's really no way to smooth it out. At least I have never hey, found a way. Hey, Bobby, can you take the grid off? Because I can't see those points really well. That you're talking. Oh, I kind of can. But if you snap off that grid real quick. All right, there you go. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just putting edit. I, it's there but I'm putting edit points. So yep, I went yep, a little yep. bit past the outside here. I obviously went past here and I went over a little bit that way. I'm actually gonna widen this a little bit. I'm gonna make it 240 because I know I'm gonna be playing with this fence over here and you want, over, you want it out on the outskirts, okay? So we'll say edit points. Now we're gonna start to play with these points. Hold on, I gotta take, turn off my space here. I'm dying in here. Hot cold, man, that's spring. Trying to figure it out. Okay. Everybody else hanging in there? Mike, Jack? Yeah. Good. All right, my man. Good deal. So now let's get in here. And I know that everything in here is at zero. So that's fine for over here. But once we start to get to this point right here, that soil starts to go up. Because I'm not doing a retaining wall on this. Sometimes I could even just do a retaining wall. And I could fill everything in with the modeling tool to like fill the soil for the different levels going up. We're going to do a natural kind of design, natural slope. So I'm going to start to manipulate these points. And by the time I get to like here, it's zero. So the only thing that I do not like that makes this tricky is I would like to have a lot more data points in here, but I'm showing this entire big old side over here. If there was a way where I could like squeeze it in and just show from here, I would, but all of a sudden there's gonna be a drop off with all these grids. So we're gonna do the best we can. Let's see where it goes. I'm gonna pull it up. We got uh, at zero, we need to get up to 21 inches. So I'm gonna say 15 inches here. By the time I get up to here, let's say it's at four inches. And then this is at zero, this is at zero. Um, let's do, I don't know. 12 inches here, and let's pull this up to four inches. Actually, I think I'm going the opposite way, actually. I am going the opposite way. I want to pull it up. Sorry, guys, sometimes I get confused. This, actually, I wanted to make it 16 inches. I'm five inches away from 21 inches. By the time I get to here, I'll be at even. So right here, 
I'm going to pull this thing up to say, I don't know, nine inches. We'll go nine inches here as well. This will make sense once I, I get in there and I show you. These are the kind of little things that we got to do to manipulate stuff. And then by the time it gets up to here, all of this, this will be at 21 inches. Actually, it won't be at 21 inches because we got six inches of the, the stoop showing. It'll be more like um, right here, probably about 18 inches, three inches of the, the thing showing. Actually, no, no, no. I apologize. I'm going to have the whole thing showing. And then we're going to work up to it. I know this is confusing right now, but if I go in here and try and do it, it's going to get really confusing. You can go in here and you can like pull on the points and that will manipulate the soil. You know what I'm saying? So I could pull right here, but you see how it makes this thing go up and this go up? It's one of those little things that we're going to have to play with afterwards. So I'm pulling this up to 1.8. If I'm pulling that to 1.8, let's pull this to 1.8. Pull this a little, see how I'm getting it up to there? And I all of a sudden, I've kind of manipulated this soil where a little bit of this is showing, but now the grade's starting to go. So if I know that four inches of this is showing, and I got this at like, say, one four, what do I got this at? One eight. I'm going to take this down to one four. And I'll show you how I'm correcting this. See how that stoop, as I mess with the, the grade, started to move up? This is a little higher than, I'm trying to click on the patio here. There's the patio. There it is. This is a little higher than it was before. I want to bring it down to the real world, which is about right here. So let's say the elevation, let's bring it down three inches, minus three. That's about where it actually is. Now let's see how that's with the grade. That's about right. So if I click on here, and you guys will play with this. This is what happens. You got to kind of play around with the points to manipulate it. This one right here is at one seven. It's at one five. Let's bring this up to, I think one seven is actually pretty good. So if that's at one seven, and I'll fix that roof in a minute. I'm going to bring this up a little bit. One seven. I'm going to bring this up to one seven. It messes with that. And then all of a sudden, what actually happens is this does start to slope down a little. So I'm going to work with this natural slope. Let's pull that height back down. For this stoop. And I don't want you guys to get discouraged as you're watching me like, man, I don't get this. What the hell is he doing? I'm just going to start doing designs with completely flat ground. <laughs> Go to Florida. It's the only place you're going to be able to do it. Florida. You got it easy down there. Right. My friend. Yeah, some <laughs> of the designs that, well, wait till you see some of the stuff, but I'm going to start unloading my 3D designs and, and showing everybody. Uh, they're pretty freaking crazy. I've gotten very good at this grid system. I know it doesn't seem like it, but I'm playing. I, a lot of times I'm just playing with the points to get it to where it is. And I'm going to, it'll make a little bit more sense as we get in here. I promise. Okay. So what is this one at? One seven. I want to bring this up to one seven and that'll even it out along the foundation. Even one eight, I could kind of bring it up a little. See how that brought it up like that. And then it actually does start to slope there. But the problem is the driveway is actually, there's no foundation showing over here. So this is at one seven. That means I'm going to bring everything over here to one seven at this point right here back. And I could just pull all these points. I'm gonna make a one seven. And what you'll see is everything went up to that level, okay? And here's the thing, this is a driveway. Driveway starts to go down, it starts to slope. This one absolutely does that. You can see it in the pictures. So I'm gonna start to bring this down a little. Let's make that one, one, three. Make that one, one, three. Let's take this down to a foot, to a foot. And then by the time we get to the street, let's make this six inches, six inches. And then this will be at zero at the street level. 
I'm gonna do the same thing over here. What was this one? One, three. I'm gonna make this one one, three. That was one. Because there was a little bit of a slope and it was following the driveway. There you go. So we've got a slope driveway going on. We've got our foundation and it's clicking up. And then we've got our stoop and then it comes on down. And then the rest of this stuff actually did dive off and it's all flat over here. So this isn't terribly complicated for the grading. Obviously you start doing hill backyards and all kinds of stuff, it gets complicated. There's two ways to go about this. You can embrace patience and practice and know that if I can do it, you can do it because it is totally true. Anybody can do this. Just take some practice. It's going to take a little time as you do more and more of these. And it may be a little frustrating at first, but this is how you do it. And once you get the grade and everything, then you can start to do the fun stuff. But I always start with the house and the grade and then you get on the fun stuff. Or you can hire a designer. You can hey, have Bobby. a staff. Yeah. So what I've been doing with this, because like you say, it, it does take some time to get used to those points and how it affects everything. Yes. Oh, I've been practicing with that is uh, if you make a landscape bed and you change the grade within that bed space. So if you're raising it up and it contours down, yep. it's been a lot easier to figure out in a small bed space yep. compared to a giant yard like that. Absolutely. So that's how you start getting good with those points and manipulating those points in that situation. Absolutely. It, it's in, and the reason I will tell you, for instance, we did a patio thing for right here. It could be the modeling tool too. The modeling tool, you can do anything. But once you start messing with the grades, everything that you're going to represent, um, like this concrete driveway is going to actually be represented with the region tool, like the landscape region tool. Because if I were to put a, the patio here, it's not going to go with the slope of the grade. It stays flush. And, and if you're filling in behind a retaining wall, that's fine because you're just like stacking until you get to the height of a retaining wall with the like modeling tool or whatever. But if you're following the contours, you've got to use inside landscape the region tool. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Got the house, got the grades. This is all sloped down. It looks exactly like it does in real life. Perfect. Did a great job there. I wouldn't have to be this picky, by the way, with all of this, if I was doing a retaining wall, because I would just be filling the soil with like the modeling tool here. I can show you a quick little retaining wall. But the point is, I always tend to get all the elevations and everything mapped out. Um, it just makes it a lot easier for when you're troubleshooting. So now here's the thing. We have a walkway, I'm going back to my measurements. It goes along the side of the house and then it hits the driveway. I have it that it goes eight feet before it hits the part of that garage that turns into siding, that looks like siding. And I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that in about two seconds, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna label out this area. So I'm gonna go to the line, I'm gonna snap it to the stoop. I'm gonna come over eight feet. Good, everything's there. So this is actually where that spot starts for the garage. Something's off here. I feel like I made a mistake somewhere, hold on. We got 26, we got 20, we got eight. Oh, I didn't add in. Yeah, this isn't quite right, this side, which isn't a big deal. I just didn't add right. So we got eight plus 24, way different. I was like, dude, what's going on with this driveway? Okay, so eight and 24 is 36 or 32. So all we gotta do is drag this over so we're gonna to go to edit points. It's kind of good that I messed up. Um, well, shit, what did we have before? We had 20 plus 20 plus 20. We had 66 as the total of, so we actually have 32 plus 20 plus 26. It's actually 78, sorry. So we're gonna bring this over to 78. No wonder when I skewed all this thing, remember when I was mapping it out, I didn't do my math right in the first place. So this is why the Google Earth looks all jacked up because I didn't add. It's okay, guys. 
we still make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes when we're doing this, but you can fix them. This is why you have measurements. This is why you have all this stuff. Not to be discouraged. Now I'm going to click on the concrete or the foundation. I'm going to just drag it over as well. I got my snaps on. It'll go right over. This is actually where it's at. So let's get our Google Earth right. We know that it's at 78. Because I actually want to follow. I want to use this to my advantage when I'm doing the concrete driveway, when I'm showing the fence, when I'm doing all that stuff. Pretty close. Sorry about that. All right, let's go in here. Ooh, I'm gonna turn the snaps off. It's making it kind of hard. It's actually right on now. Okay. Pretty close. Okay, so now we're lined up. That's actually where the driveway is. This is that walkway I was talking about. Everything. Close enough. I'm going to bring that over just to kind of cheat so I can follow the driveway. Okay, so here's what I want to do. I want to show the actual driveway. So I'm going to go into landscape, region. We're going to put a brand new driveway in. It's going to be a brand new concrete driveway. So I'm going to represent that. I'm just going to follow this with the number three. And then as far as the width of this walkway, I believe that it follows the house. Yeah, it just goes right into the stoop. So I'm gonna snap this part and it comes over. And then it goes over to about, yeah. And I'm gonna turn this to a straight line versus a curve. I'm gonna file this down because they're just following the existing template of the driveway. I'm gonna kind of V's out to the street, follow it over here. It's a little jacked up there, but whatever. We're gonna take it all the way up to the house. And you know something? If I'm looking at this, these are two by two grids. That's six. I know it's actually four. So that's not quite right. So you find all kinds of mistakes if you're doing this too. So I'm gonna just bring it over to 22. I think I had it at 16, if I'm not mistaken. As far as, no, I had it at 20 as the width of the driveway. So what I could have done is I could have put a line on there, which I'm gonna go back and check. And I'm gonna bring this up here. I'm gonna fill this in and connect it. That'll be the driveway. Now let's go check that. I go into line, and I go across the driveway. Yep, see, I knew it was off. I'm just gonna make a 20 inch and 20 foot line. There we go. Yep, that's where it is, because there's my eight, and there's that. So let's fix it. Google Earth, sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't. Let's make all these straight, there we go. All right, now we're at eight. That's what my measurements were. There we go. Now things are lining up. There we go. Good. I want to make this about the same. Let's see. Okay. So now we got a driveway, we got the concrete that goes up and it's hard to tell, but it actually is going down, you know, just like it is in real life because we messed with the grid. Now we're following it. So everything's starting to come together. Final things we got for the house and then we'll start getting into the fun stuff. We're actually doing landscaping, get the creative part going. Got to build the house. You don't represent the house, they can't see it, guys. It's the most important part of the entire design. It seems crazy. They hired us to do a design and we're spending more time on a house than anything. But this is why we sell these projects every time. Once they see it, they want it. Jack, am I right? If he's still there, he might have clicked off. I can't see anybody right now. <laughs> this is being recorded. The one designer. Mike, are you still here? I'm still here. <laughs> 
hanging in. Not a cardboard cutout here. I know. This is like probably the most boring for most. It's the most tedious, but. That's helpful though. It's these details, buddy. Exactly. It is helpful. I mean, this is how I do it. Um, I'm trying to find one that isn't so ugly. This one actually looks the closest. Now, this is a great column, but I want to get it to an eight by eight. So what you do is you click off scale evenly and you say eight inch, eight inch. And then as far as the height, I think eight feet will actually probably work once I put it up there. You see, it's this goofy kind of color and these are like brilliant white. This is when you go in and you hit edit materials and you click on it. And I always go for a lot of things, solid colors and I click white. And then, boom. It looks like it does in the picture. So I'm going to take this up here and I'm going to place it a little tall, obviously. So we are going to address that. I'm going to put it at seven, six. And it might even be a little small. A little bit more. Let's go to seven, four. Let me try seven, five. Nope, seven, four. Okay, so that's the one. So what we'll do is we'll just copy and paste that one. And we got three of them. Control C, OV. And they're evenly distributed. So I'm just going to eyeball those. And I'm going to bring this guy all the way over. And let's take a look from the street and see how we did as far as even distribution. A little off. So I'm going to take this one in the middle, slide it over a little. That looks pretty good. What do you guys think? Pretty, pretty close. This one can go a little. Okay. So now that's the first level. Once I do the house, I do the terrain, kind of get the hardscaping in, whatever that is. Go down here, click on these, and I'm going to name this level. I usually name my first one design. You could name it, probably be better to call it house. Right? So that's the first level. Go back in here. Let's add a layer. I'll make layers as I go on my design. I have the house level. I have, say, the beds level. Then I would have plants. Then I would have lighting. Then I would have measurements. I make five different levels. That's how I always do my design. I'm going to show you all of them. So the next one, we're going to say plants. Actually, no, we're not. We're going to do beds first. Sorry. All right. So in my head, I kind of already thought about this a little bit, what I want to do. This guy seems like he wants to get dirty. and He wants to get out there and do it. He's a construction guy. I know they're DIYers, and they're going to do a lot of this stuff. He wants curb appeal. You come down this street, and you hook over here. It's got a beautiful veneer entrance to this entire neighborhood. He wants everybody to know that the king lives here. I'm just saying, all, but I know he wants the goods. So I'm going to make this a little extra awesome as far as what I would do if I were living here. It's not about budget so much on this one. If it was, maybe we would do a nice hook here and bring it around and then we'd go over and we'd hourglass it out, possibly. By the way, there is a walkway here, I think. I need to put that in still on the on the last layer. Sorry about that. Maybe there isn't a walkway. There isn't one, but you wanted to add it. That's what it is. I knew something was missing. We're going to put that in our bed level because it's like an additional thing that we're adding, right? So we're going to put a cool walkway here that hourglass is out. And I want to take this bed and I want to take it like through here and I want to bring it all the way down and then I could V it out. I mean, this is way too long of a run if I wanted to go and then bring it along here, blah, blah, blah. I think I'm going to put an island out here as like a focal point as you hit in. You see this, and then you come around the island, and boom, you hit with the house. And then who knows? We might do a couple things over here. Uh, some trees along the fence. You get the idea. There's all kinds of stuff. Speaking of the fence, why don't we throw that in? Let's go into building, and then it is, I believe it's the first fence. There's fence and fence panel. Fence panel's got like privacy fence. There's all kinds of options. Um, yeah, this one right here is fence style. It's pretty darn close, but actually it's not the vinyl. You go in here under privacy. There you go. Now you got the vinyl ones. 
And let's see what it looks like. It's just closed off. So it's this is about as close as it is. Doesn't matter. You can't really see much of the details of the fence. So I'm gonna click in here and I'll have my snap on. So it clicks right into the house. I'm gonna take it over. Could check my measurements here, but we've got this all pretty much to scale. So I'm gonna follow this. I'm gonna take this down. Then all of a sudden it becomes a different kind of fence over there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna end it there. I'll just take it a little bit past the house and I'm gonna call it a day. Height of the, house, the fence is six, the width on the panels is eight, that is correct. And then there's a gate right here that's a double. Um, I believe that's an eight foot wide fence. Sorry, I just clicked off my, my measurements, hold on. We got probably about 30 more minutes and we'll be done with this. I know it doesn't seem that way right now, but we'll get there. Okay. Here we go. Sorry, I clicked off this thing. Yep, eight foot gate. Okay, so we're gonna go into here. The fence model we use, number 33. The gates, they don't line up as well as they should. That's another thing I don't like particularly much about this. That's okay. And I'm gonna find gate 33. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna bring that in. I'm gonna snap it to where it is. It actually is about to the end there. I'm gonna zip in, bring it over just a little, it's about where it is. And we got it at eight four, there you go. So cool, you got the fence, you can see it kind of staggers down a little bit. It's perfect, it's exactly what it looks like. Now let's go do the other fence, which you can kind of see in some of these pictures. It's one of those like kind of three panel, like horse kind of ones. I don't even know the name of it, honestly, whatever you call them, but that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna go in here to panel, and I believe post and rail, there you go. There's a triple right there. So we're gonna grab that. I'm going to snap this to here and I'm gonna drag it all the way down just to represent it. And then boom, as far as the height, four feet, that's probably it right there. There you go. Looking like the picture. Here we go. Okay, awesome. We got that in. And then I think it's time to put some beds in. So let's start having fun with some curves here. We're gonna go into landscape. We're gonna go into region. And we are going to click on mulch and do a brown mulch. This is one of those ones we actually could do black because they got all, actually I'm gonna do it. I don't like black mulch because it fries the crap out of plants, but you just warn them and say, make sure you stay on top of the water. And if you've got an irrigation system, obviously you got to know black is, is going to, it's going to go a little bit, but everything's black on this house. We're even going to have black windows. They're going to black out the windows, they said, and do all the trim in black. So I'm going to show that when I do the windows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bed and I'm going to go almost over to the gate. I'm going to make this thing grand. Okay. I know the gate's right there. I'm gonna go right up to there and I'm gonna start swinging this sucker out all the way to there. So I'm gonna turn off my snaps. I'm gonna show you a couple of tricks I do with my curves. So I go over to the curve and I'm gonna bring this out and make a presence with this thing. This is gonna make a statement, you know? I'm gonna zip it in a little bit. I believe there's, let's see. Sorry, my iPad went out. Yeah, there's two windows here. There's a windows here and there's windows here. So in this middle, I definitely wanna have a focal point. So I'm gonna make sure that I have plenty of room along here for that focal point. And then I'm gonna bring this out and around. Now I'm just kind of playing with this, you know? Everybody has got a style. And my style seems to be pretty hardscape heavy. And then I like to do lots of curves with big yards that don't have a lot of interest. Don't I, forget I, about I, that sidewalk. Yeah, I'm gonna cut it through. I wish I had done the sidewalk first, by the way. That would have been better, but that's okay. I'm not gonna beat myself up too hard. 
Yeah, we'll do something like that just for fun. If I don't like it, I don't like it, and I can always change it. But for lesson purposes, let's just get it done. What I don't like is that wouldn't be easy to mow. Mike appreciates that. So I'm going to go. Ooh, somehow I got away from curves. I don't want that. Sorry. Notice how it was on the straight line. I think I made it straight on the other thing. So I'm going to take this. And I'm going to I'm going to bring this out like this. I'm really. It's going to be quite big bets. And I think this. Hey, how are you deleting those points so fast? Oh, delete. I just pressed that, that, that R. If you hit backspace, it takes away the last point. Yeah, that too. Gotcha. So then I'm going to connect these guys. Okay. Coming over here. And I can just go through the house and then I connect them. And it's going to make that. Now you see these are all out of whack. Looks a little goofy. Don't worry. I got a couple of cool tricks I'll show you. So let's do some hardscaping. Let's go into region. And the reason we're not going to do pathway, we're not going to do pavers, we're not going to do any of that stuff is because we know that this has got grade. So one thing we could do, we can do the pathway. Let's just put it on center. Let me look where the door is on here real quick. So the door is actually like right here. So it makes sense to bring that walkway to this point. You can use the pathway thing. I'm gonna take this as a guide and then you could actually take your region and trace around it. I do that sometimes so that it's even, you know what I'm saying? So I could really bring this thing out all the way to here. I feel like that's a huge walkway though. I know it's hard to see with some of this stuff. I'm gonna bring it out. I'm gonna to start to curve this thing now. Not mind that. And then I actually could bring it over and then I'd hourglass it out. So I'm gonna represent this right now. You're just gonna see the shape. And right now this thing is at, what does it say the width? Oh, that's at the very beginning when you use it. Four feet. At four. All right, let's make it four. Four is actually pretty cool. I mean, it's a big old yard. So I hate this bed with a passion right now because I did it before the walkway and look how far over it is from the actual uh, driveway. Oh, I know. I dumbass. So let me click on uh, the bed. Watch this. You say B, back. That's where it is. I was like, why did I make it that big? That makes no freaking sense. Okay. That actually makes a hell of a lot more sense. I'm like, what the hell? Who would do that? Okay. So I think this is actually pretty interesting. Um, I like how this goes through and the line connects. You got about a seven foot wide bed. It's not too bad. Um, I like how this bumps out here. And this could be like a Japanese maple. We could have another cool tree here. Definitely an anchor point over here. I would rather have this hour out. So there's a couple things I'm going to do differently. And then I'm going to show you how I clean up a lot of this stuff. Um, I'm actually going to make that straight, actually, because I'm, I'm thinking about the install. How it'd be a lot easier. I am going to follow that. The only thing I'm not too wild on is up here. Um, I feel like this right here could get brought over a little bit, cut through a little bit, you know, and then this could be brought over. I feel like it's a little bit too big. We actually could do some curves if we wanted to. It is a long run. Why not? Let's add a couple. Yeah, there's all kinds of it. And then we can make some cool focal points. I don't know if I want to bring it up quite that big. 
There's a lot of tweaking that'll go on here, so don't don't worry. Now, I got somewhat of the shape that I want. This is connecting. I think that's kind of cool. Now, here's what I do to fix all this. I go into modeling and I click on excursion. I go into shape options, load shape. I usually just use the circle. You can use all, all these things to get your curves right. But I use the circle and I adapt the size. So I click on that and now I got a circle. This is how I'm gonna make sure that everything is a really nice looking curve on the overhead view. So I'm gonna get this to a size that I like. Seems pretty close. And now I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna fix everything using all these shapes. So this guy definitely needed to come out a little bit. You just try to make the spacing as even as possible. And then you know you're following, right? And that should be much softer of a curve, okay? So let's grab our circle, a little bit better. And if we wanted to have a continuous flow here, we could, we could blow up this circle and we could have it dive in a little bit there, make it even. It's gonna throw off our other line, but I want this to be on center, almost like this circle is on center with this, or at least as close as possible, all right? So now I'm gonna grab this again, edit points. And I'm gonna go in and fix this. Sometimes it's tedious work, but it will be worth it. It'll look cool. What cheers me up when I'm doing this stuff is think about the potential project and what's possible you know truth is most of the time i listen to music when i do this stuff and i just have fun like i just rock out most of the day honestly <laughs> i think i was listening some days i'm like listening to fleetwood mac or like eagles other days i'm listening to like stp rage killers i'm all over the place man what do you guys like Beatles makes, music. Beatles makes a music fantastic from the 90s. Movie. What do you like? 90s music. 90s? 90s okay. alternative? All of it. <laughs> Let me do something real quick to help you guys see a little bit better, myself included. So I am clicked on the Google part right now. Watch this. There's this transparency. I can fade that out a little bit. I could completely right. take it away. Just fade it a little bit. That's going to help me a little bit. So I was having trouble seeing. So it looks pretty good actually. So now I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna fix this little part where I feel like I'm gonna put like a little Japanese maple, okay? So knowing that, I feel like this thing is gonna go out just a little bit more. That's where I'm gonna center it. So I'm gonna fix this line too. You guys ever watch shows on like Netflix? A little bit yeah. maybe? Yeah. I started watching this show. I've been binging the living crap out of it. I watched like seven episodes and say, I never do that. I just, just wanted to keep watching. It's called Beef. It just came out. And it's like the number one show on Netflix right now. Hmm. Um, it's a road rage incident that happens right at the beginning. And from there, it just gets crazier. <laughs> it's pretty good. Not going to lie. Worth, worth checking out. Yeah. Beef. Let me know what you think next week. Out. I'll see if you can actually right. beat my record. I watched seven in one day. That means <laughs> I stayed up late, guys, because I work all day. You know, I didn't, yeah. I didn't, I didn't dick around, but I wanted to see. I just had to do it. All right, cool. So this would be a cool little Japanese maple, I think, because 
it's kind of close to here. It could be actually an ornamental tree, could be a flowering cherry. This is all full sun. So I'm thinking about this stuff as I'm doing it, you know? Now I want this hook. Another reason I like to get these curves really, really well is when we do our measurements, we're going to be able to illustrate, okay, this curve goes in here, this curve goes in here. But here's the other thing. When your client gets a top-down view, they're going to see all those curves. It's going to get them excited. And then you show the 3D, and then they see, um, so get it right. Get the curves looking good. Use these, these modeling tools to help you get the curves right. This is like our protractors or whatever, just as digital, right? So curves are important because if you print a scale too. What's that? The curves are important to get right because if you print to scale and you're you hire a new person and they need to mark the points instead of you going out to spray paint, they could have exactly the exactly man. It scale. saves time. This is saving time for your crew to understand exactly where to go and do all this stuff. You know, Aaron, you're going to be presenting these designs to other landscape companies. They're yep. easily going to be able to follow this. This is what I do for all my crews and for people all over the country. You know what I mean? Like it's, 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 a pos it's all possible. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this circle kind of come through the sidewalk like that, that snake kind of look. And then I'm going to start to play with these other curves. Now let's see what that looks like. Grab that guy. That's cool. See, client's going to like that. And then I'm going to do another bump out here for another, maybe a cool tree, a little bit away from the driveway, or maybe it's a cool bush because of the root system of trees. You know, you got to be careful with stuff like that. But I think this curve is actually pretty close. Yeah, it's close. Bring that up. Bring that up. Bring that up. We'll add in another point. I'm just going to bring it around a little bit. It's pretty cool. Now we'll come down here. They don't have to be perfect, guys. You know, I see a couple little imperfections. It's not awful. Of course, it does bother me. So if I see something a little bit off, I'm going to tweak it. All right, let's go in here and fix the final one. And then we're going to go into the planting. I think that probably looks pretty good. Decent. This wedge is a little off. I think I need to add another point to it. To fix it. Being kind of picky, but that's okay. A little better. Okay, cool. So I think that's pretty neat. Now, remember what I said, I wanted to break down the line of sight coming down the street, right? Let's represent the street real quick. We'll go into landscape, we'll go into region, we'll just do concrete of a different color. Um, let's do, uh, let's just do this 37. And I know it's kind of hard to see. I can still see, can you guys still see this for the most part? The street? Yeah. I'm just following it. I'm going to paint it so everybody knows where it's at. And I'll just straighten this out. It's a little off, but whatever. Okay, cool. So there's there. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna stage along this fence. I just want to drop in some trees and I want to put that island there. Like I said, that kind of cool thing that would break up the yard and something that they see behind. So the island's pretty easy. You go into landscape, you go into region, go into shape options. You could just pick one and that could be your island. So uh, 
Ooh, I don't know what I just did. I scrolled. Which one do you guys like as far as a big island? I already see it. The one I like. What do you guys like? There's two that I like. Actually, there's three of them. Of course, swimming pool A is always widely popular. Yeah. I'm thinking a bigger one, actually. Um, but yes, this is this is definitely like something where you can do one here, one here, maybe a cool tree in the middle. I love pond one. I love when you get two points. Where's pond one? Yep, that's always a good one. I like that too. Um, let's grab him. And I was actually thinking pond two as well. See how big that is? That's kind of what my thought was. Even region 12 is pretty cool. Um, yeah, I do like pond one. I'm trying to see, maybe I can use both of these. Let's, let's just grab both of them. We'll put two in. So as you can see, my materials is concrete. We're gonna switch that over to the mulch. We're gonna keep it the black. We got black on everything. Yeah, that looks great actually, doesn't it? Because it really, it really blocks that view and then it kind of out and then you got this little cove and then bam, you'll get hit as you drive around. I think that's the perfect one. So let's do this. That is region. However, what if I wanted to do some elevations in this? Like, like pop it up a little, then I can actually put a grid. It's a possibility. I think it'll work. I could do another grid. I could go into terrain and height grid. And I could do a grid on this, do 17 points. And I could like manipulate all of this as well. You know what I'm saying? If I wanted to make like this section, say like two feet in the air, and then this starting to slope away a little bit. Maybe we pull that down to 18 inches. Then let's just say we take all these and we make them at six inches. And same with the rest of this stuff. Let's just make it at kind of like six inches. Let's just see what it looks like. Remember when you overlap grids though, you can get a ruffle. Definitely happens. Let's see if we got lucky. It's kind of cool. See a little bit of a ruffle, a little high, and I don't think it's quite big enough. You know what I mean? But I think it will definitely add some interest, you know, where we can have a tree perched up on there. We can carve in some boulders into that. I'll show you how to do that. And if you guys got to go, I understand, man. It's all good. I know how this goes, but I'm recording this. But uh, designs take time, man. But there's lots of little tricks to be shown. I will try and speed it up. No, this, this is my Netflix right now, so. <laughs> there you go. This is your Netflix that prints dollars. May not seem like okay. that right now, but trust me, yep. this prints money big time, big bucks. You can make $100,000 just being a designer if you want. No problem. Doing what I showed you guys in the Bulletproof. Thing, and then you start doing this no problem cool. yeah i grinded it out for a very long time worked really really hard for a long time busting my ass i'd be lucky if i made 60 grand some years i know how it is man believe me that's where i'm at <laughs> there's nothing wrong with it there's nothing my dad makes 60 grand he's 64 years old he works every single day he's a contractor he does kitchens and baths and he loves it. It's not about money, man. But if you want to put your kids in private school and you want to have a little bit more peace of mind, you want to have a little bit more freedom, it helps. I'm not going to lie, you know? So I, 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 I want to give more money to my church. I want my kids to go to different school. Like there are reasons why I work and I do all this stuff. And this allows for that. You know, this is, this is a way to create some income. So that's cool, man. I, I can see this thing breaking down the line of sight right there. All right. So that's one way. Now, I will, here's I will also say, yeah. Bobby, yes. in this, um, that terrain tab, you know, you're hitting on the height grid, the height painter, and you said the area grader too. Those things are mind boggling what they can do all together. Yeah. Like if you, so where you were talking about that ruffle, that mm -hmm. height painter, 
help. There's a button that smooths all that stuff out. All that stuff is very hard to get used to. There yeah. are, you know, it's just one of those things. You just got to find the tricks in the, you know. That's right. And it takes practice. And I don't know all the tricks. I don't. I know enough tricks that I can handle any design on the planet, basically, that anybody gives me. Like, I, I can do anything and make it look really, really awesome. Are there imperfections in my methods and different things I do? Sure. There probably isn't anybody. You know, you got to find what right, what works for you. These ways work, and it seems to be pretty easy for people to learn, you know? So here's how I like to do trees. You know, most trees, it got a nice circle around them a lot of the times, and it's kind of perched up a little bit, and like maybe four to six inches, right? So here's what I do. Um, I'm going to get rid of this right now and start fresh. I go into the modeling tool. I go to excursion. And I get the circle I just had. Let's switch you over to mulch, black. Cool. Now we got a circle. It's a pretty darn big circle, though. We don't need it that big. I'm going to shrink it down. There's something like that. And here's the thing. This thing is one foot in the air right now. You see the height is one foot. Let me show you what that really looks like. More like a drum or a cylinder, right? Okay. They don't look like that. I would say about four inches. And then you can taper the sides about seven. That's what I do. And there you go. And that's what they look like on commercial pro properties, don't they? You know, they kind of berm them up. They got a little concave thing and you got a, a tree. So I'd say the four to 13, four to seven to 13, somewhere in there works great. Okay. So now I've got these guys, and I just want to put a couple of these out here to break up all this space that's going on. Definitely along the, I mean, I could do a bed here in this corner. There's, you guys know, there's a million things I could still be doing. Think about mowers, by the way, when you're doing this. I'm going to squeeze this down a little bit. Think about mowers. If we're going to put something against there, make sure we got enough room for a zero turn to go through. So I'm going to keep this off the fence just a little bit in that corner. And then I'm just going to stagger a couple of these down the line to break up that fence, create a little bit of interest. Might be a weed whacker behind some of these. But I'm thinking about that while I'm doing it, you know? And then there is a big, gargantuous, horrible tree down here, but I know they're going to get rid of it. So I'm just going to line this thing with something beautiful that I think is going to flower in spring, look nice in the summer. And just add some ambience to this. And I know those trees aren't going to be there. So I'm going to put those guys down along there. That'll be a beautiful backdrop. Since I'm doing it there, I'm going to bring it all together. I'm going to do one. It's kind of like a little triangle we got going on here. Even space. Out there. Frame that out. I could also put some out here too. I do that sometimes. I might grab one. This is a lot of lawn, but I know I'm going to have a focal point in between those two windows. So that's kind of taking up the focal point space there. But right here, I feel like we might be able to put a cool tree. I'm going to try it out. You know, um, this is a long porch. It's 20 feet. This is an ornamental tree. They'll be able to see through. Just breaks up the lawn a little bit. And I'm pretty happy with this for the most part. I think this is going to look cool. So that's the beds part. Now, there's the other side of the driveway. They got a fence over here too. So let's just put that in really quick. Building, fence, we'll go back to our privacy. It was 33, I believe. We're gonna click on that. We're gonna snap it into the house. Great. And over, we'll just kind of represent that. And then of course, the house doesn't look 100% like the house right now. Let's just fix it because we've got that siding that flares out on the sides of the driveway. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another house here. I could put the modeling tool along here. I don't know what I just did. I could put the modeling tool along here. The problem is, is if you put the modeling tool on something, if you're showing like a different fascia for the house, like this part's got siding, this part's got brick or whatever, you can't snap on a light, you can't snap on a door, you can't snap on a window. And I know, that there are lights on the sides of this garage. So I have to make it out of the house. So I'm gonna to go to house, 
And it looks like it's just white siding. Go down to wood, pick out the white one. And then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna snap this and I bring it over to the eights. So that's where it breaks up, it's 24 feet. And I'll just bring it back just a little bit. It doesn't really matter, honestly. Bring it back two feet. Whatever, close enough, a little off. I'm gonna fix it because I can't help myself. Let me turn the snaps off. I'm gonna get that to, and then this needs to come over here. There, close enough. Okay, so now I know the height of the house is what, 100, 100 inches, I believe, is what we had at the very beginning. There's gonna be no roof on this. There's gonna be no overhang on this. We're probably gonna elevate it, what, 21 inches in the air, the foundation. So we're going into perspective. Let's go over there. Believe it or not, it probably needs to be at zero because we, because of the grade, it probably flipped it up in the air. So we'll just take it down. And then what we wanna do is we wanna pull it forward just a little bit. So I don't have my, my snap on. I'm gonna draw this out just a little bit so you can see it. There we go. And that's what that looks like. And I'm gonna take off the trim. And it looks like to me, the size of these is a little thicker, almost like that kind of modern rustic thing or that craftsman style. So you can make them a little bit bigger with this size tool. Let's make it at four. And that is what this length is. And then there's a light here, there's a light here, and there's a garage door. We're at the point we're not gonna manipulate the soil. We're not gonna change anything. So let's throw a garage door on there. You go on door and it's on this guy right here is where all the garage doors are. It's a black garage door and it looks like it's got uh, windows. They have a lot of options, but this looks pretty close. They're not always gonna be perfect. And it goes to about here. The only thing that I'm seeing that's a little off is the driveway is a little wider. Like it's more like to there. So I'm gonna fix the driveway just a little bit because I can just tell it's a little off. So we got this guy and then the height of it isn't quite that high. I'm gonna bring it down to seven. And then I'm gonna make it black. So I go into edit materials and there it is right there. To make it black, this composite nine is probably close. I could go into accessories and make it like a, a metal black. I think I'm going to do that actually. Go into accessories, there's tons of it. Black aluminum, brushed copper, black wood, black plastic. Let's go to black wood. There you go. Oops. Sorry, I'm trying to move something around that you guys can't see. Okay, so let's widen the driveway a little bit. And then we actually need, still need to do the walkway. I never did that. So we're gonna go back in there. This is just one of those things I'm gonna fix. I'm gonna bring this over to about here. It's just a little off, you know? I would rather have it be a better visual representation than 1,000 million percent down to the inch. Sometimes they're just a smidge off and that's okay. You know, I run a lot of jobs off of these and sometimes they're just a little off. But at the end of the day, I can't spray paint and going over the numbers. It's not, it's not too terribly much. Like the square footage of this, if you were to measure it, what it would really be, it might be off like 10 square feet just account for a little extra material. That's what I would do. So let's fix the walkway. We're gonna actually make a walkway and we're gonna make it out of pavers. Um, and then I'm gonna switch it over to concrete because it's gonna be concrete in real life. So if you're doing it out of the region, not the, not the actual patio tool, here's how you do it so you could even show a border. Here's your main material. Let's just go to Unilock. Let's pick out a gray paver. Um, Let's go with this one right here. It's got a little interest. And let's say we want to put a border. We'd say add border. And then we can pick out a border. Let's go back into Unilock. Uh, let's pick like a, I want to pick a darker charcoal of some sort. Let's just try this. What the heck? 
I mean, I'm just playing around here, guys. And then the width of the border, let's make it six inches, like we, we were using a six by nine paver. And um, this is our this is our paver. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the snap on because I'm just gonna keep this at this. I'm gonna switch this over to a curve. That's fine. But when I get to the driveway, I'm actually gonna go a little bit off. Now I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna hourglass it out just a little bit. So it's a little bit more wide and inviting. And I'm gonna make it about the same distance on both sides. And we can always adjust it. It's a little goofy and we need to tweak it. You know, we do that. All right, so there you go. Click it over, boom. Now let's get rid of this. Here's our actual walkway. It's a little off. We're gonna go in here, we're gonna tweak it. I'm just doing it by eye. Ooh, wow. Okay, turn the snaps off, please. A little crazy. It won't look too bad. We're gonna roll with that. So we got a cool little walkway. And there you go. So you got that, you got the walkway, it's kind of curving around. We got all these cool curves. Got the, the thing. Let's put some lights on it. I'm not gonna throw all the windows and doors on. You guys are anybody can <laughs> you I'm not gonna waste your time with that, but I'll show you the lights. Why not? So this is why we can snap a light in because we made it out of the house versus doing it out of like the modeling tool or whatever. I'm just doing copy paste, bring it over and boom, we got some lights. Okay, cool. All right, guys, this is looking pretty cool. You know, we got all these beds, we got the great address, we got all this. Let's do something where I'm gonna show you how to put a boulder into that elevation that we did. I have some boulders in here under my custom tab. I use this boulder seven a lot. And you can manipulate the size of the boulders, all that. We're gonna have boulders all over the place in this design. So I'm gonna take away the scale. I'm gonna bring down the height to like two eight, squeeze this in a little bit, maybe the width a little bit. I'm gonna make it a big boulder though. Now I'm gonna position it so that you can see it, bam, coming from the street, okay? So let's go over there. And I'm going to have that boulder so it's actually dug down into the elevation. So right now it's perched up on top. We don't do that. When you're putting in a boulder on a job site, what do you do? You carve out the bed, you move, remove the soil, you pocket the boulder in, and then you have stuff creeping around it so it looks like it's nature. So what we can do is we can mess with the elevation. Let's drop it down a foot. And now it looks like it's carved in. And that's what I do on those. That's one example. Pretty big boulder. But I like it. I think it's cool. So I would stage all the boulders that I want in this design. Maybe I want another boulder on this hook right here, and then one up here to kind of make a statement. Let's just do three of them, and then we're going to get on to some planting, okay? You guys have been great. I know I've had you on here for like 90 minutes. I'm sorry. I'm just not fast at 3D designs or explaining them. Oh. They take a minute, you know? <clears throat> Hey, Bobby. Yo. On your on your boulders and your three D objects. Yeah. On mine, I have a three D axis point. You know, X Y Z. And I can move stuff off of that. How do you move stuff off of that? No, like I I could. So you know how you changed your elevation? Yes. I could click. You know. I could click this bar and lower it manually. I mean, there's what's the what's the phrase? Not two ways to skin a cat or whatever. I'm, there's so many ways to do so many things in here. Like I said, you could probably teach me a million things just from messing around with the the newer software. There's probably a couple things that 
I'm that's not what I'm aware asking. Aware of. You know what I mean? I this didn't know I got it because yours doesn't even show. It doesn't. No. Is that? See what I, I it's probably it might be something that's turned off. I don't even know. All okay, I know okay. is how to make things look pretty and sell Josh. <laughs> I mean, that's the truth. I'm pretty good at that. So, I mean, you don't have to be the best at the software, which is why I love this software so much, because that's why I say anybody can do it if I can do it, because there's lots of ways to get the job done. You know what I mean? This is just the ways I've found to make it and, and make it work. So guys, I think that's about it on the, on the boulders there. We could do another bed over here. We could do another island over here, which I think is probably the move. Um, we could take this guy right here and we could copy the grid and actually bring the grid over. Then we could take this region and we could bring this guy over. But maybe what we do is we just flip them around a little bit so it's a little bit different. You know what I'm saying? Just spitball in here, guys. And then all of a sudden, we've got a little bit of interest over here as well. Not too shabby. I think that'll work. I mean, we could do another shape, but whatever. So cool. Now we've got our beds and I'm also going to put a boulder over there just to kind of play around with it, keep it cool. All right, there we go. Let's make another layer. Now we're going to add the layer and we're going to call plants. This is where we start planting, which is fun. I already know that I want to drop in a bold cypress tree as a cool focal point. Something that I know looks good in here. And it's going to be something I would love to hit. I like this number eight as they come off and they're just bam, hit with this. And then I want to mimic it over here as well. Okay. So we'll just kind of play with that. I think that looks kind of cool coming around. Like I said, I know there's going to be a lot of uh, sun going on here. So I got some yellows going on. Yellows and purples always seem to go together. So I may put some uh, in blues. Uh, I may put some uh, blue carpet juniper, some lavender. There's all kinds of things that I can do. But usually I start with my boulders and I start with my trees. So let's start getting some other trees in here. I always go to a flowering cherry. It does well in St. Louis. They look beautiful in the spring. They're very hardy here. Um, this is knowing your zones. Anytime you want to know your zone, it says it right here, planting zone. Anything you click on in this program, which is beautiful, planting zone, says the height that it'll get to, the maturity. I mean, it, it really lays a lot of stuff out for you. It's beautiful. So I'm going to put that flowering cherry over here. It's enough off the house. It'll create some, some interest. It's going to do the job. I'm going to move you around over there. And then what I want to do is I want to put more flowering cherries in this design. So I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to drop him over here. A little bit of balance. Now, if I want to go really kind of Zen Japanese, I could do flowering cherries. This whole perimeter, I could do a combination of flowering cherries and arborvitaes. I think I'm going to do some of those. We call them green giants here. We got some green giants or type of arborvitae. And this number eight looks very close to a green giant in the program. So I'm gonna line, let's see how big those guys are. That's pretty good. I, I, I can get them that big. And sometimes if I feel like I go up to something that, let's just say, you see how it looks like it's floating in the air right there, guys? All I do is I just take the elevation down maybe like four inches. And now it looks like it would, it would in real life. That's being picky, but I notice little things like this. So. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy and paste. And I know Aaron knows all kinds of tricks to do this better, but I'm gonna line this fence, break up that fence with these arborvitaes. And I'm even gonna put one right here. I'm just kind of lay that out. So I've got most of my trees in. I wanna put a couple more cool trees. I'm gonna do a Crimson Queen Japanese Maple. So I just type Japan, and it'll go into this. And the one that I think looks the most like a Japanese maple, at least here, that's got that kind of bonsai feel, is this number nine down here. I really like this one. I use this a lot. So I'm going to grab him, and I'm going to make him the focal point of some of these bump-ups. So I'm going to put him right there. 
And I'm going to put him right here. I'm even going to put one right here. I'm going to get fucking crazy with Japanese maples, guys. Sorry, cussing, but I'm going nuts. And then I might even put one over here. We might just go Japanese maple crazy on this design. I'll drop five over here. Cool. One other thing I want to do is I got to find a focal point in between these, these uh, windows. So what's my other tree going to be right there? Um, don't want it to get too, too big. I know it's going to be in the sun. Uh, I just wanted to break up the windows. I'm going to do something called a Korean lilac. Something I go to, they get about six feet, nothing crazy. I think it's perfect for breaking that up and the root system isn't too crazy. And when I put my windows in, they'll be on these sides. Okay. So now we've got a bunch of trees and some boulders starting to look like something. And now we're going to start to fill in what I call the meat and potatoes, right? Our bushes. So going here, shrubs. I'm going to do a backdrop of Wajila wine and rose bushes. I like that burgundy color. It gets a cute little pink flower. I use them in a lot of designs. They look really nice and they don't get too tall and block windows. So I'm going to drop in a couple along here. Two on this side, just kind of frame out this, right? And then let's see if we can find a couple other spots we think it might look good to pop them in. What do you guys think might be some good spots for Japanese maple? Or I'm sorry, Wajila. See any spots? We're on the bald cypress. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. So we could drop in maybe one here on the backdrop. We like threes and fives, don't we, right? Maybe I'll move that bald cypress just a little bit. A little bit more centered. Let's do the same thing over here. I'm gonna put one here, here. Not, not everything has to be symmetrical, guys, you know? Maybe on this one, I, I could even like put this boulder, say over here. And I could take this guy and we have put him like here and do kind of a four. Doesn't really matter. You can do whatever, whatever you want. Um, I'm also feeling some grasses here to kind of soften the space up a little bit. So you go into search and type grass. You can find a fountain grass here. One in St. Louis, most places that does well is called a Hamlin. It's like a two by two. It looks like this. Perfect re representation. So I want to stage some of these to kind of give this wispy flowy kind of look. And I'm going to start over here and I'm going to snake them throughout all of this. So big beds, we've got lots of room. There'd be plenty of room for annuals and perennials here or anything that we wanted to creep around. And I'm going to start to drop in some grasses. I don't know what I keep doing to do that, but I am. And have them snaking through the design a little bit. I'll do two more over here. And then I think it's pretty obvious we got to have a backdrop or something right there. So we're going to get over to that. Well, let's take these grasses and let's bring it throughout the design. And with the size of these beds, these are actually spread out pretty decently. I'm on fire with that button. Not perfect, but pretty cool, okay? So now let's get something up along here. Something that doesn't get too big and provides some winter interest. I'm gonna type in holly. Something I like to use called a soft touch holly. This number five looks pretty close. As you can tell, I got a lot of go-to plants that I use on almost every design. You'll get to that point. Now, this looks kind of big, so I'm gonna squeeze the symbol down just a little bit so that it, it doesn't look too out of place. 
And I'm going to drop in probably four over here, almost a little bit of a hedge look in a way. Not too shabby, not perfect. Then over here, I think this could be an opportunity for cool pots could be there, could be another little dwarf tree, could be a boulder, some kind of focal point to greet them. I'm gonna go with the pot. I'm gonna play with this a little bit and I'm gonna make some wild going on, maybe some butterfly bushes or some lavender or something. So you go into accessories, click on planter. One of the ones that I like a lot is down here. It's this planter 106. I think it's just kind of a cool, got a good green, good shape. I'm gonna put it in the middle. I could also put a sundial here. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff, guys. I'm gonna take the scale off and I'm gonna make this bigger. I'm gonna make it two by two by two. Try that out. And then I wanna plant a bunch of stuff around it. Let's see what we got going so far. It's starting to look kind of cool. Got some nice drops. I definitely want this thing fatter. I don't like that. That looks better. Bigger pot, bigger statement. You got these guys. It's looking pretty good. What I like about this design is there's lots of opportunity for future planting still. I mean, there's this spot right here. There's You could do annuals and perennials around these. I'm more of an open concept kind of designer. There's lots of people who just flood them and do all kinds of stuff. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But I am going to go kind of a flood approach here. It's going to plant. Let's go into lavender. I'm just going to put lavender. We could do a Spanish lavender. We could do the kind that's more on the purple side, which I feel is, I feel we've gone red and yellows on this. So I want to do this English lavender right here. I think it'll look really, really nice. We could do a mixture, do all kinds of stuff. And I'm just going to drop these guys in, okay? I'm going to shrink the symbol down a smidge. And I'm going to go to plant. I'm going to drop it down about four inches. Let's see what height we got on that so far. Hi, kids. <laughs> is it bedtime? <laughs> I think it's bedtime, guys. Okay, so this is pretty big. Um, looks kind of cool, though. I'm going to drop it down just a little. I don't want to scare the heck out of the, the homeowner. But I think that's a good size. He can't see you, baby. At least I don't think he can. He might be able to. Okay. Let's drop these guys in and just kind of create this kind of wild, flowy vibe. I'll be up. I'm almost done. And then we're going to put something in the planter. And then I'm very quickly going to show you one more thing, guys, and I'm going to leave you alone. Okay. Let's get something in that planter. Um, let's just do a candle lily for the hell of it. I like this number 22. I'm going to drop him in. I'm going to elevate him about two feet because that's the size of the pot. That's too much. Let's go 18 inches. Yeah, it's kind of fun. It's something a little different, right? Kind of a little focal point as we go up. I think it's looking pretty good, guys. You know, there's a lot of opportunity here. Um, I know they're a DIYer, but I have a feeling we could do this job, you know, the, the planting. They're going to need equipment for this. It's a lot of labor to carve out all that, blah, blah, blah. I'll put a proposal that reflects it. I'll put a loom video together like I told you guys. Make sure I'm walking them through, get them excited. Hey, I'd love to do it. Planting seeds, right? All right, so final okay. thing. Let's create one more level, one more layer. I'm going to do this very fast. Actually, it's two layers. We're going to go lighting or lights, whatever you want to call it. This is how I do lights. It's how I do lights. Sure, there's a way even in the program, but I like this because I can see it. I go into arc under the plan detail and I click and I drag this out and I swoop it around. I do not connect it. Somehow it gets a little effed up and I click there. I go into shape options. I make it a circle. Now it's connected. Then I'm going to weigh it down. I'm going to make it thicker. I'll make a six. I do up lights with yellow. It's just how I do it. So I'm gonna make it yellow. So I got a yellow right here. And I wanna make a key someplace. I'm gonna put the key back here. So I'll make this a little smaller. Now I'm gonna copy and paste and I'm gonna make my next one. I make path lights in orange. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna turn this to orange. 
just how I do it. If I had a retaining wall and I wanted to undercap lights, I make them in a light blue. I would show that. If I want to put a spotlight on a boulder, I make them in purple. That's what I do. So I am going to have some spotlights here that I would show. So let's bring this back. I'm kind of making a key right here, right? And I'm going to make this purple. And those would be the lights I would represent in this design. Then I would go into text. I would bring the text and I would say up light. And I make it bigger so the client can read it. Copy paste, bring this down, we go into these three dots. And I can change this sort of path light. Perfect. Copy paste. I'm going to call this spotlight, which I believe is one word kind of defeats what I'm trying to show. When I say spot and then light, and not get anybody jacked up, I'm just gonna do it, I don't care. It's my world, man. All right, here we go. Now I'm gonna copy and paste the yellow. Where would I have up lights? I'd have them on parts of the house. I'd have them on the trees. So let me show that. Let's show the trees first. So I'm gonna shrink this down and I'm gonna put it right on the tree. It's just how I do it for my clients. Copy, paste. Got a Japanese maple there. I would put a light there. I got this cherry. I put it there. Korean lilac. Sorry. If I wanted to show that I wanted to show it on parts of the house, I'd put it right here and say that would be shining on that brick, right? And I do this all over the design for anywhere there would be an up light. I feel like Forrest Gump. I've come this far, might as well keep going. You know what I mean, guys? Mm -hmm. I know. Okay. Bobby, does that show up on the 3D? No. Okay. Just on the overhead. Just on the oh, overhead. Yeah, yeah, plain detail. Got it. Yeah. And then I could even show up lights on all these back here if I wanted to, guys. Whatever. So let me copy and paste one more. And I'm going to turn this over to orange now because I want it to be the same size. I'm going to show all the path lights where I would put those. And you can put lights in the design. I never really do. Um, don't need to, you know. I'd probably put a path light here. Put one along the walkway, of course. Maybe one more right here. And sometimes I like to throw them along the edge border of the bed. I like lights. Like I, I put a ton of lights, and they're easy upsells. You know, and they make a difference. Lighting is such a big thing, man. It makes such a difference. I'm not going to put any path lights or anything out there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show where I would put spotlights because I love me some boulders. You guys probably know that. And I like to light up boulders. I would show everywhere there's a big boulder and I would want to show that boulder off. So that's why I would put these guys like this. And there you go. Now you got your lighting. Now, the final thing I do in my designs is I add a layer and I call it measurements. Perfect. I do it old school, man. I take the line thing and I put points of reference. So from this corner out to this hook, it says it's 13.6. So then I can just keep it green. Actually, I'm going to keep them green and I'm going to delete all those other points of references that don't matter, but I actually am gonna show that one. So that's 13.6, I go into label and I can drag that out and say, this is 13.6. And then I just kind of copy and paste these. I'm gonna say from this point of the stoop to the edge of this hook, if I zip in, I can see better. So the edge of this is 7.6. So then I'd label that seven, six. Okay, you get the idea. So you can go around and you make all those measurements. If I wanna know the square footage of the uh, concrete driveway, I click on it, I go all the way down, 925.9 square feet. So I'm gonna say 950 square feet. Give myself a little cushion for my contracts, right? Paver walkway. Maybe I want to make it concrete. They probably would do this as concrete and pour it all as one, but at least I can tell them 
It's 77.3, let's say 80 square feet, 85 square feet, you know? I'm gonna actually have this one come out. I'm gonna say 85 square feet, okay? So the point is you can go around, you can make a bunch of measurements, show everybody, okay, from the edge of this bed to this bed with a different colored line is 36 feet. So they know where to position it and they know how far, I throw them all over the place. Now, here's the beautiful part about these layers. You can turn them off and all of a sudden you can show every little facet of the design and snapshots to your client. See what I mean? There's the finished product for the most part. We don't have the, the windows and the doors and all that, but you get the idea. I'll clean it up tomorrow. So there it is. Now don't click off because I actually got something really, really cool that I'm working on that's going to be coming out in the next couple of weeks. I'm going to have a mini course. It is very cost effective and it can get you started on learning and seeing if this might be something that you are considering doing for yourself as a career or just, you know, for fun, extra side hustle, extra cash. The mini course will be coming. You are going to love it, I promise. So stay tuned. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you do so you know when it drops. And if you'd like to keep going down the rabbit hole, go watch this video. This is Bobby K saying creation is everything, so go out and create. See you on the next video.